For more on the coronavirus outbreak, I'm joined by Adam Kamrat Scott. He's an associate professor of global health security at the University of Sydney. So, um, first, I want to get your reaction to the WHO declaring the coronavirus a global health emergency. Good morning. Uh, this is not really that surprising given that what we have seen um, obviously in the last couple of days is further localized transmission in countries outside of China. So we were expecting that in the event that development did occur that the WHO would then declare this a public health emergency of international concern. Adam, do you think that the travel restrictions and the confinement, especially within China, have made a difference here? Uh, certainly the quarantine efforts will help to slow the spread of the virus domestically as well as potentially internationally. And that's why the Director General overnight uh, really praised the efforts that the Chinese government had uh, taken uh, to try and contain uh, the outbreak within China. Um, that's where 99% of cases are currently located. So if China is able to control and contain this outbreak, uh, then it offers very good prospects for the international community. What do you make of the other measures being taken place, uh, being taken place in other countries, governments, airports, even airlines are cutting back on some of their routes to and from China. Um, is there anything more that can be done? Uh, unfortunately, with the respiratory virus, um, these are the, this is the nature of the world that we live in now. So with the amount of international travel, uh, it does mean that when we have outbreaks starting in one part of the world, they're able to spread internationally quite quickly. What we've seen from airlines cancelling is obviously, uh, it's a combination of factors. One, they're concerned about their staff. Uh, and the well-being and safety of their staff, but also passengers as well obviously start to look at cancelling travel um, and then the demand for those airline flights isn't, isn't there. Beyond that, what we're seeing in countries around with uh, things like uh, border entry screening um, can help identify cases, but obviously the more important element given that incubation period is that governments provide incoming passengers with information on where to go if they develop symptoms. There's talk of a vaccine being ready in 8 to 12 months. Is that realistic? And how would you describe how patients are being treated currently? It would be quite exceptional for the vaccine to be developed in that time frame. It's not saying that it's not possible, but it would be quite exceptional only because aside from obviously developing the vaccine itself, then we also have to see um, fairly extensive clinical trials to make sure that there is efficacy of the vaccine and its safety. Uh, beyond that, uh, the measures that are going to help contain this outbreak are really come down to things like quarantine and isolation and treating people for their symptoms. Uh, so providing uh, medications for people uh, res experiencing respiratory distress. Um, those are some of the most effective means that we can really use at the moment. All right, Adam Kamrat-Scott, thank you so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it.